Yo, the Knicks. They did get one W though. Unfortunately, we gotta talk about all of it. You know, I thought Stephon Marbury and his Vaseline antics were the last of embarrassing point guard moments for the New York Knicks, but no. Tony Douglas, Shane Larkin, Chris Duan, and as trash as all of them were, they did nothing compared to the skid mark that Derrick Rose left on this franchise with his antics this past week. On today's show, we're going to be venting our thoughts on Rose, but also look at the deeper systemic issue that the New York Knicks have faced because of their lack of success these past two decades. We'll also try to give you the top five reasons why Derrick Rose didn't text the New York Knicks, and we will be debuting our critically acclaimed game show, What the Hell is Wrong with the New York Knicks? Now, let's take it to the round table. Welcome to the Mad Good Knicks Show. I'm Far. That's TK. That's Steph. We're here to give you all the Knicks news all the damn time. Check us out on Instagram at Mad Good Knicks Show, on Twitter at Mad Good KS, on Facebook, Mad Good Knicks Show, all that good stuff. Just hit us up, talk to us. We talk everything and why K. All right, guys. So before we actually start, I do want to give special shout outs. Uh, we have grown immensely over the past uh, couple months since we started the show. Um, and, and we want to thank all of our fans, especially uh, one of the fan pages in particular, Nick's Movement. Showed us a lot of love. Really do appreciate that. And one of our, our biggest fans ran into him at the game. Renor, his Instagram is down below. Big time fan of ours, always checks out uh, our shows, shows us a lot of love, so thanks for that. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's 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 get on with it guys. Uh, topic of the week, Derek Rose. Um, and I, 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 we will we'll go to the Chicago game in a bit. Um, there is a bigger issue here though, and that was Derek Rose just going AWOL. Uh, <laughs> missing, uh, and <laughs> no one had any idea where the hell he was for, for almost four or five hours. Uh, during the game, at least Knicks Nation didn't. Um, T, thoughts? I, like, this is the weirdest story I think we've we've ever had to encounter. It's very weird, because like, we don't really have anything to go off of, you know? We just know that he wasn't there, no one knew why. We still don't know why. I know Pete and Steph were looking for him on the Mad Good Minute, I thought that was hilarious, still couldn't find him. Obviously, I had no luck. Uh, I just feel terrible for the guy, to be honest, you know? It must be so difficult to fall that massively from an MVP caliber level to just, you know, kind of, he's maybe a below average point guard at this point. He may just be. I know that's arguable, but um, I just feel terrible for him. So, I think the fact that he was fined $200,000 for a quote unquote family issue is very suspect. Yeah. Like, that's a crazy fine. I mean, these guys that get two technical fouls that start fights on the court get way less for fines. And like, the fact that he's, 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 he mentioned in like the news that he was considering leaving the game. Right. And then a few days later, he's like, oh, I need a max contract of $150 million, 30 mil a year. This guy he seems totally unstable. And I think that's like the <laughs> worst possible thing that Knicks could use at this point. Something's going on in here. A lot of things so. did add up about this whole situation. Um, and I think it first started with the players. The players looked off that entire game against the Pelicans where Derrick Rose was missing. Yeah. Terrible. And then the post game, Terrible. they looked worried. They looked like he was he was dead or something. They had no idea what happened to him until Joe Kimmel cleared it up. Then Coach Hornacek, that's what I found the most interesting. Yeah, that was yeah. concerning. That was bizarre because Coach almost looked like he knew something was happening. Um, but then all of a sudden, uh, he, he was reluctant to really acknowledge it was going to be anything too empathetic. and. And then after the fact, he was like, well, it's family issue. I wish you called this, but it's a family issue. So I don't know. And a lot, a lot of questions. 
For me right now, he's not on my top point guards to get the summer. Uh, no way. The most concerning thing about it, to be honest with you, I think was the fact that he mentioned he didn't want it to be a distraction for his teammates, but, but it, it was nothing but a distraction. How, Sway? Uh, yeah, seriously. How? The fact that like every, and Wally Serbiak, Charles Barkley, all the guys on TNT mentioned, not only has, has this never happened on their team, but they've never seen it in the NBA. Period. The fact yeah. that like, yo, if you have a family issue, I know everyone says text, but like, Really, like if you say, yo, like family issues won't be there. How many That's words? It. There? Family issues won't be there. It's five words, like an hour at least before your flight. They're like, you're on an airplane. You have Wi-Fi. American yeah. Airlines, Delta Airlines, like private airlines. airlines. Yeah, let them know. That's, yeah. And, and Finn, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, we we managed to sneak into Derek Rose's text messages. <laughs> Who did it? We will bring Russia. We'll bring that to you later. <laughs> So this was obviously a very embarrassing moment for the New York Knicks. Maybe tops as, as far as I can remember, and, and I know there's a lot of moments to pick from, but in the last 17 years, where did this fall in the spectrum of Knicks oddities, for, for lack of a better term? T? Uh, it's gotta be right up there with uh, number one or number two. Uh, I don't wanna get into number two, but let's just say there's number one for now. Uh, in the whole grand scheme of things, in the context of Derrick Rose calling this a super team, to begin the season prior to ever stepping on the court with any of them, I think this is pretty damn embarrassing. It's unfair to the rest of the teammates, but it's unfair to himself um, to just walk away from the team like that and, and not give his brothers on the court right. a, a chance to speak on his behalf. You, you guys tell me if you, you, you're, you're showing up to work, all of a sudden you just don't call and you go MIA for a day, what's happening? I don't know. There will be stronger repercussions. Oh, Absolutely, sure. like a suspension or something. But like I said, if it's a family issue, it shouldn't be any repercussions, right? That should yeah. be so understandable. But I think the New York Knicks organization, are they're trying to put this like little pretty band-aid on something that really needs surgery. You know, mm -hmm. this team needs to like open up, dissect itself, figure out, it's like, we're trying to get the best guys, like Phil Jackson, we're trying to get, you know, an ex-player, Jeff Hornacek, we're trying to get a Rose, all these guys that like look really nice from the outside, but from like the outside looking in, it's like, I'm sorry, from the inside looking out, it's like, damn, this team is, like, they have no idea what's, what's, like, what pace they're on, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, 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 it's And I, I do want to say, uh, you know, it being a family issue and all, we hope everything's okay, obviously. We're yeah, making light of the situation here and yeah. there, but absolutely. We are deeply concerned. We're talking straight up Nick fans, and I'm trying to channel my energy that I felt that Monday night of just the frustration of how the hell can our point guard who called us a super team just not show up to play one day? Right. And there's so much pent up fr frustration. There's been a lot of talk about blowing this team up. And it, 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 this, this Derrick Rose situation was just icing on the cake for all of that. Here's why I don't want to blow the team up. And we're getting a lot of questions on like trades, Melo needs to go, Rose, blah, 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 Noah's contract, all that, build around KP. Um, I, this, we, we, we blew the team up just two years ago. Seems like well, let's <laughs> not forget that. that. We blow the team up, we get a bunch of draft picks. Guess what, Knicks fans? We don't have the patience to wait on draft picks. Oh my gosh. Unless they're surefire lottery top three to four picks in the NBA draft. KP. Yeah, but that's not even guaranteed anymore, man. It's, it's not. not even like, yep. It's not. Well, luckily, we do have our picks this year, though. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah we do. Pros. For the first time. Thankfully, thankfully, <laughs> we do. And then, and then the other issue that I want to address is Carmelo Anthony and just trading him away. For multiple reasons, I believe that's, that's a terrible mistake. Hey, Melo haters, I shut y'all up last time. They're not on the round table anymore. I did that on purpose. No, I'm <laughs> um, but but last last episode we had a conversation about Carmel Anthony, what he means to the Knicks, and I'm still defending him because he still puts up 30 points a game. He can, and he protects KP that, to the point where no one realizes that, both on and off the court. This man is a huge influence for Kristaps Porzingis. What do you guys think about that? Because I have deep respect and love for Carmelo Anthony and him staying in New York when. No one else would even want to. We're not even going to get the value back. So Definitely you can forget not. about that, that too. That too. But most importantly, um, Carmelo needs to dig deep down inside and find within himself. Like he's played some good games as of late, 24 points, six assists, and and kind of really trying to focus on the defensive end. So I, I don't want to pull the plug just yet. I don't know, man. Being, being like a Knicks fan and a Melos fan, it's kind of like being in a relationship where your significant other like gives you shit every day of the week, right? <laughs> and then. Like one day everything yeah. goes like happy go lucky and you're like, oh this is great, but it's like, but it doesn't feel fully right because you know the next day is just gonna be 
another weight pulling down on this team. Like, sure. It's like, uh, okay, average 30 points a game. Like, get your assists up. Win a game against Chicago, which isn't like, like, what are we so happy about? Who is Chicago? Okay, against? okay, I see your argument yeah, here, Steph. You know, okay, <laughs> okay, I see your argument. That's a good argument, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but, you know, all right, let's throw something else into this girlfriend, <laughs> boyfriend, domestic here. violence situation. That That's why you just pay the up. big bucks. <laughs> um, but if, if, well, tell about that. If, if the significant other, say, was, you know, supporting your, your child, that could potentially be a big part of your future, i.e. Kristaps Porzingis. You know, that is a whole different scenario, and I think that's kind of what Carmelo Anthony is doing here. I can't believe we're talking about it in this context, but... <laughs> Melo is protecting our baby unicorn. You guys aren't getting that. I, I like that point. That's him. a very good point. Yeah, like, he attracts defense and, like, uh, pulls the defense away from Chris Dasperzingis. But now his sore Achilles thing, I'm just... I'm just yeah. Like, what do you guys but think? Melo, and Melo's also the greatest power forward. <laughs> One at the top in the league, but he doesn't play that position uh, anymore because of our lineup. And a lot of people yeah. say, hey, switch KP to the five. I, that's not going to work. Oh, KP is too frail for that. Get Yo, that out of your head right, right now. Let's do it. Let's yeah, put yeah, that yeah, to right. bed because that's just not true. Christoph Porzingis is not a center Man, yet. Say? Stop asking. What'd us. That's not going to happen. Hey, KP, the unicorn. Oh. He's not, he's not a traditional center yet, so stop asking. In a couple years, he's gonna be there when he puts on more weight. Maybe. Right now, that's not happening. Therefore, unfortunately, we're in a position where Melo can't play the power forward. Correct. <laughs> All right, guys, we have a very special treat for you. In light of probably one of the hardest weeks in recent memory um, that we can memory. recall <laughs> as, as <laughs> Knicks fans, um, let's, uh, let's, let's take it to one of our critically acclaimed game shows called What the Hell is Wrong with the New York Knicks? Yay! We'll be right what back. The hell? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to another episode of What the Hell is Wrong with the Knicks? Welcome back to another episode of What the Hell is Wrong with the Knicks? I'm your host, Pete, and we're here with Steph, John, and TK, and today we're playing for this absolutely gorgeous but completely unrelated fantasy football championship belt. This thing's got some weight to it. I can't wait to unload it to one of you, so let's get off to our first question today. Here's how this works. I ask the question, and these guys write down the answers, and then we all get bored reading them. So, the first question is, if you were Russia, and you could hack Derek Rose's phone, what would you find? Contestants, get to work. Well, that took long enough literacy rates in this country. TK, we'll start with you. If Russia hacked your phone and you were Derek Rose, what would they find? We found a text message from Alan Iverson saying, Yo, we was talking practice, not the game, you big dummy. John? The text from Joe Keen. Next win, we should celebrate with a golden shower. Steph? A text from Curtis Rabbis. Is that a thing, Curtis? Irrelevant. Wait, you weren't at the game tonight? Phil didn't want to tell me. He says I never pay attention, but at least we're still third seed. So relax. I'm sorry, it was text, not novel, but we'll accept the answer for now. Unfortunately, I didn't like any of those, but I'm being prompted by the judges that I have to pick one. And I'm gonna go with uh, the only one that made my peewee move a little. John's Golden Shower answer. The question we'll be talking about when we come back after the round table is, should we blow up the Knicks? Should we trade Anthony? Should we start over again? We'll cover that when we come back. The answer is yes. And we're back. Welcome back to the round table, Big seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we hope you guys enjoyed uh, some of that game show. We're going to have more coming up right after this. We do have to talk about, however, the 76ers loss and then the, the win uh, against the Bulls. Much needed, much expected win, so I definitely want to say that. But how heartbroken were you guys? Did they still win the Sixers game? I turned it off. They were up by 17. Yeah. Ooh. Why'd you turn it off? Because they were going to win. They were up 17. Two minutes left. That's what I thought. Right? Let's, uh, let's break it down here, guys. So, uh... Last play of the game, Knicks are up uh, by one point. KP airballs a three. If he had hit the rim, if he had hit the rim, the clock likely would have expired, wouldn't have given enough time for the Sixers to set something up. 
Turner. And then, uh, whatever the fuck his name is, uh, hits a turnaround, fade away, jump shot, because we are the New York Knicks. We and we lost to the 76ers. Yeah, it's funny. Like, it's crazy. What's that going to show by everybody else? You know what I mean? Like, like DeAndre Jordan can't dribble the ball. Yeah. But then how, how, how less did he practice? Rate. This dude just started it's yesterday. Crazy. What is that? I think he's gonna be he's gonna be a phenomenal player. It's gonna be fun yeah. watching KP and Embiid face off uh, yeah. in, in, in years to come. Yeah. Ben Simmons didn't even enter the court for the Sixers. They're gonna be a problem. I heard he's training though. He's working out now. Very soon they're gonna be a problem. But all right, this is the Mag Nick show, not the Mad Wax 76ers show. So <laughs> let's talk about the Bulls, shall we? Uh, we 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 beat down the Bulls. It was a good game. 104-89 for the Knicks. First game in a long time where I was I didn't have like migraines. Just watching the New York Knicks do stupid, stupid stuff throughout the game. Yep. So I think Melo really did lead this team. Uh, and then, you know, Rose also did his thing. I'm still, you know, I'm in a love-hate relationship with Rose right now. <laughs> but but Melo really did his thing. And, and he had a good all-around game. So have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it sucks to think that, like, the Bulls had the lowest three-point percentage in the NBA. I still think guys were open. They weren't hitting any shots. I don't, yeah, and I don't want to analyze this game because it's not a game worth analyzing. I don't. The Knicks should have won, and thankfully they did because normally it's a game thankfully. that they would lose. Yep. Yeah. But the Bulls are shorthanded. They didn't have Jimmy Butler. They didn't. They didn't have Meritage. They, they they really should should have lost this game, and they did. The Knicks took advantage. I'm happy for it. Oh, yeah. It made me feel good though. Yeah. Makes me feel happy. The Coos, Coos, shout out to Coos. Career points, baby. Woo! Oh, yeah. Let's go. Finally. And Lithuanian Player of the Year, man. Yep. Mag and Nick show, we posted it. Thanks for all the reposts. Really do appreciate that, guys. You know what was big though? Uh, we had 20, 20, what was it? 24 points and 26 rebounds combined. For With Noah and KO? Yeah, that yeah, was big Yeah, KO's beasting. I always, I told you guys, I think KO, if he, if he tried hard, he could be like a Maurice type, space type. Yo, player. it's a jump crazy. Shot. I thought, I thought, I thought KO lost it just a couple games <laughs> yeah, ago yeah. when he looked like last year's KO. Yeah, yeah the flu yeah. and everything, but yeah. I, and I like I was thinking about this. Now might be a good time to trade. Look, teams want him. We are, you know, quote unquote, on the down downside. I hope not, but look, I don't want another two three game stretch of KO from last year and then we're like, oh, we should have traded him when we had a chance, just like we felt with Lance yeah, Thomas. Yeah, watch us get like Ricky Rubio and a bag of chips for KO. Oh, we should have traded him when we had a chance, just like we felt with Lance yeah, Thomas. Yeah, watch us get like Ricky Rubio and a bag of chips for KO. I'd be like, fuck. <laughs> Probably yeah. would, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I, yeah. It is what it is. But anyway, first time in a long time I'm seeing Bully Bowl brought back to the garden. Thank you, KO and Joe Kim Noah, for that. One night game. <laughs> One night game. <laughs> One so night special. We're going to see if the Knicks can keep it up. That's the point of all of this. So, all right, guys, just to wrap this up, um, again, this Derrick Rose ordeal was absolutely ridiculous. I don't. I don't, I don't really know what to make out of this. New York versus everybody for life. But because we are the Maggot Nick Show, we're really going to analyze this every which way possible. Here are the top five reasons why we think Derrick Rose didn't text the Knicks. Here we go. Start the countdown, guys. Number number five. five. He took the New York City subway to Chicago somehow and, you know, no cell phone service. Understood, if that's the case. Makes sense. Number four, his dog ate it. Oldest that's trick so in the book. These days. Oldest trick in the book. Everything's digital. His dog ate his phone. You got, a, you got a big old yeah. pit bull that might chomp up a phone or a computer or something. Yeah, you think he can poop out a full phone? Possible. Rose, I don't think so, man. No, it depends on the big booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> he has an iPhone in the winter. Oh man, those tricky iPhones. Those damn battery <laughs> lives. Darn iPhones. As soon as it hits 30 degrees, it just goes to zero. Yeah, we're uh, like, number when you need me the most, I'll do that. Yeah. Just like Rose the <laughs> Oh, we know you're outside and need your phone, so dead. <laughs> oh, you're playing Pelicans in your point guard? Dead. <laughs> no, number I call two. this a super team and just said, fuck this game? Dead. D-E-D. Dead. <laughs> D -E -D. dead. <laughs> uh, number two, you low key don't give a fuck. Oh, mm. man. I'd be, I, you know, just be straight up, D Rose. You know, we're not, we're not clamoring to keep it here. You know, we, we've had good times without bad times. We're not, we're not obsessed here. No. Number one, Ron Baker told him not to. <laughs> that's, that's a viable reason. Okay. <laughs> He's looking out for a teammate. Okay, fine, I can understand that. That's the top five reasons why Derrick Rose possibly did not text the New York Knicks. What do you guys think? What, what's the craziest thing you think of? Drop it in the comments below. We want to hear your stuff. We'll feature it in the next show. Don't be mean. Until then, 
We got we got a chip to play for on what the hell is wrong with the New York Knicks. Let's continue that. And we're back for the follow-up question. Now, T, earlier I asked you, should we get rid of Melo? I need your answer now. Well, I like to see. That doesn't sound like a yes, John. Let me start with you. Maybe you have some sense. Are we getting rid of Melo or what? I think with Melo, the thing is that when he is playing and doing isolations and things of that sort, it makes it really tough. And sometimes he makes Can it. We get some sound like isolation for this. <laughs> Steph, please. You kind of look like my brother. Melo. What about him? How how rid of should we get him? I think I think Carmelo has been uh, a lot. A lot. <sighs> we ship this here for no reason. These guys are useless. Maybe the third question. <clears throat> and finally, question number three on this episode of What the Hell is Wrong with the Knicks? Guys, I'm gonna get personal here. Last time you used the family issues excuse, what was really going on? T? Well, there was this time, sophomore year in high school, where I shat myself early morning, nine o'clock when I just got to school, and I had to run home. I threw my underwear in the trash, and I told my teachers I had a family emergency and I had to go home. That sounds too believable. Oh, it is. John, you called out sick, but you were full of it. What was really going on? Yeah, um, I told someone once that my mom died so I wouldn't go to their funeral. That's pretty meta. I like it. Steph, you called out of work, you had family issues. What was really going on? Actually, um, mine doesn't have to do with work. Um, mine relates to Taylor's here. Uh, for four years through high school, I was um, force-fed laxatives for dinner every night. I had um, very rapid diarrhea every morning at school, and um, that was a legitimate family issue I had to deal with. Guys, this tiebreaker, we have a two-way tie. The answer on what the hell is wrong with the Knicks is always some shit. Guys, you share the belt. Thank you for joining us on another episode of What the Hell is Wrong with the Knicks, there, where there is never any winners. And no one ever goes home happy. I'll catch you next time. Hi, Ma. Hi. Cause lately I've been coming bitches on the dick and I got all this money called. I can't help but full of fake love. They don't want a piece of me. All this potential is what I've been made. I know they can't get it back from me. Lately I've been coming bitches on the dick and I got all this money called. I can't help but full of fake love.